the relationship between George and and King James as as the sort of the 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 pure love that kind of grew between them, albeit you know it was transactional at first. You know, it, it grew into something really really beautiful, and and I think that's really reflected in the scenes, which is lovely. James dines soon at Apthorpe with his brother-in-law, the Danish king, and a new friend tells me there are openings for cup bears. You want me to hold a man's cup while he swallows? I'll leave the specifics to you, but it's not a man. It's a king. So, are you ready for his majesty or not? I loved, I do love, uh, Mary and George. It's a wonderful piece of television. Um, mm. Just wonder, could you two, could either of you two imagine a queer story like that's been told before now, like any time before now in TV and film? Do you mm. know, it's interesting, I made a movie called The Kids Are All Right, and I think The Kids Are All Right was, what, 13 years ago, 14 mm. years ago? And it was considered revolutionary. Mm. It was the first time that a queer family had been depicted on in a film in a completely normal way. Mm. Like, there, there wasn't any dysfunction. It was simply two moms and their kids. And so I think... When I look back now and I think, wow, if that was that was only 15 years ago, it's taken a long time to tell these stories. So I feel so, I mean, I'm, I feel really gratified that, that they are being told, I think, so often now. It's about time. Yeah, I think certainly in the mm-hmm. last few years, it's been, you know, we're, 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 we're still progressing in the right direction. Yeah. And does it feel like there's a bit of a double standard in that we've had stories in this kind of genre, this historical fiction genre told about non-queer relationships and we're only now getting the kind of queer ones beginning to come through? Or do you feel like because of kind of people's attitudes, it makes sense that we're only just seeing these now? I think it makes sense. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think we were seeing it anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in historical drama or non-historical mm-hmm. drama. Mm-hmm. So it's, I think it's great that it's happening across the board. Mm. And what, one of the things that felt really refreshing about the show was the kind of unapologetic use of sexuality by the characters, regardless of who they were. Um, uh, what discussions were there on set about those scenes and how they were being used to kind of move the plot forward? Because they weren't just there as salacious scenes and gratuitous scenes. They really seemed to be advancing things. Right. Well, I think in this, you know, in this is a a, a, a show where the, the scenes... Where, where people use their sexuality as currency, you know, they're often they were they were it was not just always about intimacy. Um, it was about how do you, you know, how do you use this to to get ahead? And and then so there were the scenes were also moving the plot. And I think Oliver was very careful about that with us. It was not it wasn't just a kind of a show and tell kind of thing. It was really story oriented. What was it like working with Oliver? Did you find that his identity as a queer man himself really helped kind of shape? the kind of queer storylines and the, and the authenticity of the show. Yeah, I, uh, totally. Um, I, I, and, you know, talking about the intimate scenes as well, uh, he had such a, a beautiful uh, attention to detail. I really feel actually watching so many of those scenes, there's a, there's a, they're all so beautiful. I, I agree with what you're saying. Not, don't feel salacious in any way. And, um, I mean, look, be, I mean, beyond that as well, I think Oliver's just a... Um, incredible filmmaker and I was such a fan of his work before the project so um, um, he, he's, he was such a valuable asset to the show overall. And was there anything that surprised I with you about the, the series' intimate scenes in terms of how they were approached because um, they weren't toned down as we might have seen in other other genres or other, other pieces of film and TV. They were quite kind of explicit in some cases but tasteful and... Yeah I think look I think it's all about honesty. I think we're, we're interested in, in an honest portrayal of of you know this this era Jac- Jacobean England and um and I think it really helps um you know illustrate I mean certainly from my perspective the relationship between George and and King James as, as the sort of the 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 pure love that kind of grew between them albeit you know it was transactional at first you know it it grew into something really really beautiful and and i think that's really reflected in the scenes which is lovely and julianne you had some amazing lines in the you both had some amazing lines oh she's got some some good perfectly uh do you have any that kind of particularly stand out to you any favorites (laughs) i think i my favorite was if i were a man i look like you i'd rule the fucking planet Mm. that's my favorite Mm. and you tell yours oh yeah we've been saying (laughs) my favorite is also one of julie's lines <laughs> and it's he's so cockstruck it's, it's like, like a, a curse. curse. <laughs> so cockstruck, it's, like a curse. it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> uh, now Nicholas, obviously uh, not a stranger to uh, 
royal romance fiction uh, with red, white, and royal blue. Um, out of the two, which do you think has a better chance of getting a sequel? <laughs> well, well, well mm, I, mean, I know. I mean, we we kind of <laughs> leave the, this story in in quite a sort of an absolute uh, uh, place, and I think it exists really well over the um, the seven episodes. So, um, yeah, I think it's <laughs> I think that it says all it needs to. Would you be up for a, a sequel to Red, White, and Royal Blue? Look, I, I think with with any um, opportunity of doing a sequel, I think you, you know the, the script has to be right. But obviously, I, it was so lovely to see how many people it, it, it touched and having that resonance is, is incredibly important to me. So, yeah, of course. I think lastly, are there any other historical figures that either of you would like to take a chance at adapting? Any other kind of queer figures that you might know of? I'd love to do something in ancient Greece, being a Greek myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got it. Um, what, what time is it on? Watch it. I will, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> that's, my, that's my vague answer. <laughs> very, very excited for it, you can yep. tell. <laughs> Perfect. Great. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very Cheers. much.